Good morning, y'all. Hope everybody is doing well this morning. So I come out here, do a little fishing before I get started on the challenge. Threw a few casts, no dice, so I figure let's just get started. You just never know out here. Hit them first cast, you catch 12 fish. Sometimes you don't catch a fish at all. Who knows? Today's challenge card is a pretty simple one. And that is to show y'all how to use a Texas rig. So to start out, I'm just going to tie one on, which I've done before. I've shown y'all in previous videos how to tie things, you know, clinch knots, yada, yada. So, oops. Oh, crud. So I've talked about this in previous videos before, but Palomar knot is an awesome knot. You don't really want to use it unless you've got a tool handy. Whew. More effort than it was worth. But no, what I was going to say is a Palomar knot won't come off your hook the same way that like a clinch knot. You can just slip it back off once you've cut it or tied, you know, taken it off. Palomar knot really has to be cut off just because of the nature of the knot. And you know, it probably does say something about the knot itself. So instead of a clinch knot today, I will tie a Palomar knot. Get a couple strokes out away from the shore here the wind's just not cooperating at all this morning but that's all right that's all right palomar knot very simple take your line fold it over itself so you know double it up go ahead and pinch that down you're gonna run this doubled line through the eyelet of your hook Easier said than done. All right, once you've got that, you're gonna take it and you're just gonna tie a simple overhand, you know, overhand knot with your doubled line. And then you're just gonna simply bring that loop around your bait, pull it up over the knot, and you just cinch down both sides. Now you should probably wet your knot, especially if you're using braid or something. I don't ever wet my knots. Maybe it'll bite me in the butt someday. Maybe it won't. Never has before. But yeah, simple Palomar knot. Go ahead and lose the tag end. Nice thing about that Palomar is you know, you know for sure it ain't going nowhere. I feel the same about my clinch knots, but other people, you know, might tell you different. So again, just do whatever's best for you. Do what you're comfortable with. If you're catching fish, you're doing the right thing, you know? All right, all right. Now, actually fishing a Texas rig. You can fish them different ways, but the way I like to fish it more often than not is one way, and that is simply casting out letting it drop all the way down and as soon as it touches bottom you're gonna pick it up drop it back down pick it up drop it back down you just want to keep that line taut you want to keep it tight you know you don't want any slack you don't want to be slack lining hook sets and breaking rods all that fun youtube crap that you see but yeah literally this is just it you let it touch the bottom let it fall keep your rod tip up because that's how you're gonna feel that bite and it's also how you're gonna feel when you're hitting bottom so keep your rod tip up and sometimes I like to let it just sit there for a second because them arms especially like on a craw or on a wacky rig it's, it can sit there and flutter and so I've gotten many a bite on the sit down like as my line is actually just sitting there on the bottom you'll feel that thunk 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 you know, that is coming kind of thudded, almost like a crappie. Almost like a crappie on a minnow, just a little thunk, thunk, thunk. Just the general feeling of it, I mean. 
but yeah, just, you know, raise that rod tip up, drop it down. I actually had a little bite there, but I'm shooting this stupid video. <laughs> Would have been cool to catch one on video for y'all, huh? Not very smart of me to be worried about the action on my rod and not hook setting stuff. Try that again. Let it touch bottom. Raise it up. Bottom. Raise it up. And again, it's windier today than I care for on the yak. But we'll make it work. It's not even that windy, it's just I don't want to have to tie off an anchor. But I'm going to have to tie off an anchor. Down and up. Now, just because that's the way I like to work it doesn't mean you want to work it that way every time necessarily. Sometimes I'll pick it up higher, sometimes I won't pick it up nearly as high, and then other times I'll just give it a little kick. Just a little funk funk. Bump, bump, and just drag it along the bottom. Just little kick ups along the bottom. I haven't seen a lot of underwater footage of like how crawfish act in you know certain depths of water or anything like that. I don't have any super cool like scientific you know knowledge to give you on that. But I will tell you, I've had a lot of luck on both picking it up. And just dropping it down slowly I've done it a lot quicker and had luck on certain days but I've definitely had luck just ticking it along the bottom too as opposed to doing the big sweeping drops and each body of water is different too you know like I said I've I talk to guys all the time that fish these same bodies of water as me and either do way better or way worse like what I, I consider this probably the best lake around as far as multi-species fishing, bass fishing, cat fishing, both. I was talking to a guy last night who thinks this is the worst one around. Like they're just, you know, talking about trying to figure it out. And it's like, hey, I don't know that I've got it figured out. But this is my favorite place to fish. And so, one of those things. irritating me to a point where it ain't going to be very fun. Again, it ain't that windy. It's just can't fish if you can't sit still.
cooking. Let's see if I can do this without tipping my yak. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. We'll just have to screenshot her. Ah.